Now remembrance services will take place in churches across Southport today to remember the victims of Monday's knife attack. Six-year-old Bebe King, seven-year-old Elsie Dot Stancombe and nine-year-old Alice De Silva Agua died after being stabbed at a Taylor Swift themed dance class. Five other children were injured along with two adults. We're joined now by Reverend Marianne Kent. Uh, thank you for being with us this morning and tell me a little about the importance of these memorial services that will take place in Southport today. Across Southport, the churches will be open as well uh, to welcome everybody, those of faith and those uh, with no faith, uh, to be a safe space to bring all that we're feeling today, the anxiety, the, the numbness, the fear and, uh, and the grief. And uh, everybody is welcome, whatever you believe. We need to be together at times like this. It is nearly a week since these awful attacks. Um, how are people doing there in Southport? I think there's a lot of mixed emotions around. Not only are we remembering uh, the victims of, of Monday, Southport is now associated with the violence that's going on across the country. And we are remembering all those communities too today. Um, and, and, and working and committing ourselves, I guess, in churches across the town to, to work for, for peace, for reconciliation in our communities, to, be, uh, to, to act in kindness and love rather than in hate. So, for, unfortunately, the, the events of Monday are, you know, are, are part of a bigger picture now, aren't they? Yes, and I wanted to ask you about that. When we see what's happened across the country in, in the last couple of days, of course, sparked by what happened there in Southport and, and, and the protests that took place right after that. Is there a, a feeling of hopelessness, a, of anger, of upset, of frustration that what happened there has now gone on to cause so much other unrest across the country? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we should be focusing on the, the, the families. We should be focusing on our children and young people who've been traumatised by the events of Monday. And yet we're being overtaken by the events going around the, uh, around the country and the violence against the, you know, the first responders, the police, who were so wonderful on Monday. So I think there is all those emotions you describe, but also not hopelessness as such, but a commitment to, 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 to the South what's going pink in solidarity. It's a, a, a protest to say we are not about hate, we're about love, we're not about division, we're about unity. So I think there's a strong community feeling that we are bigger than all of this and we together we are stronger and we will build a better world for our young people as they grow up with this trauma for in their, in their lives, uh, for the rest of their lives and for the adults of course as well. And those who are living in fear at the moment because of the threat of violence again here. Yeah, we're just looking at some London landmarks lit up pink as well, as you said, that uh, reflection of what happened in Southport and how it, you know, it, it, in a strange way brings people together as well, doesn't it? The community coming together. We were there where you are a little earlier seeing all of the flowers and the teddy bears and the cards and the letters that have been left by the community. How important has it been for the community to be able to come together in that manner and, and to see such a public tribute there? to what went on a week ago. I think it's great to see the public tribute here and at Hart Street and at the schools uh, where the little girls went to. But actually, it's far, far, far greater than what we can see here. It's all the people who came out to clean the roads after the attack on the mosque. It's all the people who dropped off chocolates and flowers uh, at the mosque and uh, for the police. And there are so many acts of kindness going on in Southport. Everybody is doing whatever they can whether it's um, making handmade cards to leave at the sites or making cakes or bringing toast down, uh, water down to the, the, the press crews that are around. Southport has really pulled together and every act of kindness is saying we're against this hate, we're against this violence. Are you hopeful in a strange way that out of something so horrific and so tragic there can be some sort of community healing and something that brings people together that has a lasting legacy there 
Absolutely. Uh, you know, our f Christian faith is based on death and resurrection, about the light shining in the darkness. It's all about what we do from here. And it was brilliant to be with our Muslim brothers and sisters on Friday night, with the imams who came to support the mosque uh, on Friday to lay flowers together. And I think there will be a lasting legacy of, of working closely together to build community and to support one another. So, yes, we shouldn't have to have horrific events like this. But I think there is a very strong commitment in Southport that we will be a better place because of it. We will be a kinder place because of it. And kindness and love will always win through. Reverend Marianne Kent, uh, good to have you with us this morning. I really do hope everything goes well there today. Thank you for talking to us this morning.